Hey everyone, so there have been quite a few comments um, on my videos asking about the tools I've been using um, and I've been giving people advice of how to get hold of these tools and who makes them um, but I haven't really delved into how to use them. So I thought today I'd make a little tutorial video of how I use the hollowing tools to make these cups. Um, so these are the cups I make, um, the little vessels they um, are quite bulbous and quite round and they have an undercut of the lip um, on the end grain and the side grain. Mm. They're extremely fun to make um, but the main process of making them stems first from making the hollow itself and to make the hollow itself I use this tool here. Um, so this tool is called the Twicker Cam. Um, Twicker Cam I know it to be based off an old clog making tool, um, a Welsh clog making tool. Um, I guess it's been adapted and moved into more of the spoon carving world. Um, but I use it primarily for, for carving out the hollow of the cups. I find it's even a curve really useful to get in and underneath using a sweep. And I can use my body in quite a quite a healthy way, if you like, and quite a, a fluid way <laughs> to remove material. Uh, this tool is made by a maker called Nick Westerman. Um, there are other tool makers out there who make these similar ones, but I quite like the angles that Nick uses and the steel quality that he uses as well. It's just my preference. But I hope you take a lot away from this video, and I hope it inspires people to start making more of these out there in the world, because I really enjoy seeing them. Um, if you do make any based off the information in this video, I'd love to see. Uh, do tag me at me, share with me what you're making. Um, yeah, good luck. And this has been cut quite interestingly by a tree surgeon. Um, we can see here I've got a bit of the spaltiness here. I'm going to try and avoid it. I'm going to split along this line here. Um, and I'm going to burrow with the hollow from the top surface here. Should be enough material in there. I think it, we're just using a little bit of uh, spaltiness. Let's see how far the rock goes. Um, it's fairly important as part of my process I make to slow down rather than to speed up. Um, so it's good to put yourself in a nice mind frame of calm and relax. Um, and we're not gonna be rushing this, so do put some time aside um, to practice. Rin. Okay, I can test out my new blue saw. And what I'm aiming to do here um, is to just even out the relationship between this side here and this side here. Our crown is being level and in line with each other so that when I clamp it, um, it won't slip out. All right, tidy. Let's see there where there is a burrowing beetle. Okay, a few little wormholes, but nothing too serious. I'm just going to axe down the top face. And here I'm kind of looking for any big surface knots that are hiding underneath the bark or anything that would make this wood a bit unusable be wary of when it comes to the hollow. I'm um, also looking for wormholes. This birch is particularly quite wormy. You can usually do without that when you're hollowing. But this looks to be fairly clean. I'm not being too precious to the finish. Simply just popping this in. 
if you're making a vessel with a foot, I'd recommend um, doing a bit of admin on the face just here to just try and flatten it. Let's get a bit more of that pith out whilst I'm here as well. Don't stress yourself out too much and don't exhaust yourself because you'll need a lot of energy for hollowing. Let's so you can see here, it's a knot coming from the back into the side here. It's not going to be very detrimental to my hollow. I'm probably going to place my hollow more towards this area here or this half just to try and avoid any interference that's happening here what you can do um, is you can take off the bark on around the whole thing just to get a better idea of where these knots are lying um i like to just kind of just let them play out to be honest um but i should probably teach you good habits You can kind of see I haven't been too precious about the finish. I've just sort of flattened the edge off roughly. Sometimes I don't even bother, so I like to reveal what's happening just beneath the bark anyway, be quite sensitive to the material. Um, for this one, you get a better understanding if I was to flatten it, so I thought I'd do a bit of admin. Um, so now we can clamp this and get hollowing. So this thing kind of has a few different names out there in the wood world. Um, I know it to be a bull mate, um, other people call it a cup horse, bull donkey, and a vessel camel, <laughs> it's got lots of different names. Um, it's actually a log cut out um, that you use to place the piece of wood in between and wedge it in using two wedges. So you can kind of see how I'm beginning to wedge this in now. Um, so the piece of wood goes in the middle. Um, it's going to add a spacer on right this end just here, um, which frees up this end. I can use two of these. I'm probably going to need another spacer actually. I'll do. I'm just going to tap. ends just here, keep it nice and locked in place. Okay so the first tool I'm going to use to start hollowing is this one here. This is my ads made by Josh Burrell. Um, he says and it's kind of like an axe but with a scoop on the front um, it's used in a particular manner. The way we want to use this to begin with um, is we have our hand placed underneath our wrist for support. It kind of removes any unwanted radius when we're working. So we're placing your hand underneath. What I tend to do is put my elbows into my hips as well, just so I can really control a pivot or lack of pivot. So I'm being really rigid and removing any variables where I don't want movement. For this, I just want the tool to be moving up and down like so, I don't need to be increasing the angle with my elbow, so I can keep my elbows locked to my body for support um, and to remove any unwanted pivot. And we begin with using this tool in line with the grain. So the grain's running all the way through, and I'm going to start the hollow working in line with that grain with the handle. Um, if I work to the side, I'm worried about the wood tearing out unwantedly. Uh, so I'm going to begin work in the middle and I raise a few fibers up you see the tool is just lifting up and down as I'm exiting the tool if you like I'm slightly twisting my hand away just to drop my hand so it's easier for the edge of the tool to leave the wood I don't want it to get stuck and I'm going to come back the other way 
I'm going to do the same thing again and you can see here I've relieved the fibre and that's what we're aiming for is that relieving of fibre. Come back the other way, that'll do. You're kind of just having like a conversation if you like between each way. I'm starting off quite small in the radius in the middle and as I'm beginning to establish a hollow I can begin to expand it and move it. Bending this back leg. And now I can begin to work on the side grain. We're working with the side grain. Um, what we don't want is um, to expand it too much, if you like. So, and when you're working with a side grain, you're wobbling quite a lot more with the vessel, so it might come undone. So you just need to give it a little tap in occasionally, just to make sure that the friction is still engaged. Begin to expand outwards. So we can begin to sort of work around and expand the hollow. Um, I don't really expand too much more. Um, some makers like to get a lot of work done with the hollow or with the ads. But for me, I think I'm just going to leave it about there and give my Twitter cam something to do. So now we can begin to work with the Twitter cam. It's worth pointing out that I don't just use the right-handed tool, I also use the left-handed tool. So I'll take you through a bit of that and how to use it. Um, we'll use them both together. Um, I'm going to start off with the right to establish more of a hollow. So we're going to turn sort of the ads marks into more of a, a ticker cam tool finish mark to begin with. And then we'll begin to work deeper into the hollow and more into that concave inside. Um, so to begin with, the way that we're going to use the ticker cam is in from the top, okay? And we're going to create an arc with our hands coming in. Um, and we're going to twist from the top of the lip into the middle with the grain and we're going to sort of work all the way around this shape. And you can kind of see here the motion that we're going to make is this twist. And it starts off with, um, we're looking directly over the top of the material. And focus on your dominant hand for a moment. So your dominant hand uh, and dominant facing tool is starting off sort of in front of you, like you're leaning in on a motorcycle if you like. And the motion is going to be you're dropping it down and twisting it around. It's almost like you're, you're churning out material. So it starts from the top just here. Um, if I look at it from a clock face, I'm, I don't know, one o'clock, two o'clock on the clock face. And I'm dropping down from the top and coming in. That's kind of the main motion of how the tool articulates. The next motion we're going to use is our non-dominant hand. That's going to be towards the base of the tool on the ferrule where it meets the where the handle meets the metal. And that's not doing a great deal. What that's doing is it's providing push resistance. So whilst this hand is pulling and twisting towards, this hand pushes the tool and guides it into the wood. Okay? So this hand's kind of moving the tool itself and twisting the tool to articulate it. This hand is making sure the cutting edge is always engaged into the wood. So we're doing a bit of both motions here where I'm pushing down whilst levering out. Now the body position is fairly important. What I like to position onto the bowl mate itself is a 
purchase of my body. So if you imagine like a like a sign writer has a sort of stick that he pushes up against it to guide his arm to keep it sturdy. I like to have that sort of anchor point as well with a leg or my hip or just something in contact with this bow donkey just to stabilize myself. Okay, and then pushing down. And you can kind of see where the energy is stemmed from. It's sort of stemming from my shoulder. I'm quite rigid to begin with up top, almost with my shoulders into my ears. And I'm pushing down with my non dominant side whilst twisting out. I'm working to begin with on this top right just here. So I'm right handed, it's the top right. If you start off with the left handed tool, it'll probably be the top left. I'm starting here and I'm cutting in from the top. And what I'm aiming to do is just tidy up this top lip surface just here. I'm coming in to begin with, like so. And I'm just giving a little tidy up with the tool. So I'm easing myself into the tool and how it cuts. I then move my body here. I'm going to do the same thing around on this top left. And the sounds will give you a lot of information. So I kind of want it to be almost like it's sort of crunching snow, but in like more of like a more of like a soft sense. There we go. That kind of that motion. So listen to the tool as it's biting in. You can kind of see here. I'm getting a more of an established lip along here biting in. I'm going to come back this side here and meet it. And have them blend into the two. So you can see here I'm working in quarters at each time. the recap again, so contact with my leg onto the block, hands pushing down, this hand's levering up and around. That's the motion, it's coming in, twisting out, it's a twisting arm, it's one sweep. And this hand simply pushing and guiding the tool, cutting edge into the wood. So we're doing two different things together here. And notice how the the articulation also stems from a stepping up. So this is how we begin to get underneath the lip here. So as I'm working to begin with, I'm quite low in my body. As I'm carving up, I'm taking the strain out of my arms and the lift of my shoulder, which can be quite uncomfortable, with a slight step up. Okay, so. So you can begin to use a lot more body when you're working by increasing that stepping motion to take a little bit of pressure out of the push and out of your shoulders. And that can also be combined as you're working around tight corners with twisting as well. Um, so you can really use the motion of your whole body, which is what I love about the Tukka Cam. begin to engage your whole body to get deeper into the hollow. And you kind of get a good example here of how much the tool faces away from me to begin with. I'm not locking out my arm, keeping it always bent for comfort. I'm really exaggerating the motion of lifting and using my whole body to hollow in. So a little bit more. 
here. Good. So it's going really well. I've got a nice pebbly shape just here around the lip. It's nice and even. Now I want to start removing material from the bottom just to get um, a nice finish here. So with this I'm going to use more of like a squeezing method with the tool itself. Um, I'm going to have my hand behind the material. I'm going to put an anchor point of my palm onto the wood. I'm adding my hand onto the almost the metal bit of the ferrule. And I am closing my hand to bottom the tool. And again, I'm twisting with my dominant hand around. That's all that my hand's doing here. It's just a case of just the hand is just twisting inside the material. And then my left hand, my non-dominant hand, is guiding the cutting edge. established a hollow but now we want to try and get underneath this lip surface okay now to do so we want to work in quite an interesting way now where we want to work with the tool engaging different corners if you like of the hollow now the right hand engages the right side of each time if you're in relation with the side of the of the grain running through so if I stood on this side here carving away, I'd carve the adjacent right. And similar if I also stood this side here, which I'm going to do now, I'm going to focus on hollowing my adjacent right. Like so. so. You're always working in almost like a diagonal with your body. So my shoulders are positioned diagonally to the adjacent right. Like so. Again, hip on the side. I'm going to repeat that same motion coming in. And I'm going to begin to increase the angle of the tool as it's hollowing. Like so. And I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to stand where you are now. Coming in, I'm going to hollow in this area. So I'm entering the tool um, quite aggressively now, and it's almost tilting underneath. Okay, and being quite careful not to knock the tang of the tool against the lip. If it does, we can just carve it away, but it would mean our hollow is a bit a bit wider. We want to be really making a small hollow to a wide, sorry, a small lip to a wide hollow. So the tool's biting in aggressively. And I'm focusing on that push into the hollow. And that's where we begin to get underneath it. So I'm just going to repeat this a few times um, and you'll be able to see how I make the hollow with the right hand tool. So you should be able to see now I've undercut on this side and 
on this side here. Now the tricky thing is now it's trying to get over to this left hand side. Now working with the grain in a hollow, whether it be a spoon or, or a cup, the grain works. If you divide your, your cup into a, into a cross, we want to hollow in from this side here and away from the centre line into the, into the side grain. So from here this way, here this way, same on this side here, this wants to go this way, and this wants to go this way. And it's really, really difficult to get the articulation with the right-handed tool to hollow in a relationship from um, end grain to side grain um, towards the left-hand side. Um, this right-handed tool with the articulation with your right hand um, likes to cut towards the right side, so we can't really get that towards the left. Uh, in an ideal world we have a two-handed tool which we can just sort of reverse it and come in this way here. And that's kind of why I get the left-handed tool, because um, I can have the cutting edge on the other side to come in from the other way. Okay. So the closest I can get with the right-handed tool is just on the end grain to get a nice finish. I can't get into this top corner and get a nice clean finish in there because the wood's much more resistant to it. Not fun for my body, nor the tool, nor the wood, um, or the nose. <laughs> so we're going to come in, this tool goes to the right and get a nice finish in here, but I can't quite get into this top corner. So to get there we use the same tool, just with the cutting edge on the left hand side instead. And that's going to enable me to get in this top corner. Um, exactly the same diameter, 50mm, um, exactly the same tool, just reverse cutting edge. And that's where I can get into this corner just here using that same articulation. Now it's slightly different using this tool, mainly because um, instead of pulling with the right handed tool, I now have to push away with the left handed tool. So instead of pulling with the other one, I was pulling towards, I now have to push away. So before when I was using the right handed tool, I had my non-dominant foot forward, my dominant foot back in my crouch. I'm now going to reverse that, have my dominant foot forward, my non-dominant foot back with my non-dominant hip onto the block, getting quite low. And similar motion again, I'm guiding the articulation with my, with my dominant hand. So I'm uh, adding the pivot and the movement of the tool with my dominant hand. My non-dominant hand again goes in a similar position on the handle and it pushes into the grain itself. And that's where I can get a completely different finish and much more ease of use for my body. It's a game changer. Once you get to this point here where you've got an undercut hollow on all sides, um, with both tools something quite magical happens and that's where you can almost reverse gravity and begin to carve in from the bottom out from the top to get really pushing the width of the undercut. And that happens similar to that squeezing grip we did before, so you can squeeze with the right and you're kind of carving upside down, so you're beginning to carve the inside upside down walls of the reverse gravity hollow. Um, so with this, I can begin to push and really push that side grain out to start removing material. And I can repeat the same on here on this side. Like so. So you can begin to carve upside down and inside out of the hollow to really push that under lip. 
carving in and then carving out. And you kind of just play with those movements. So you carve in, you carve out, relationship between right and left, and you're kind of playing, you're working. At this point, there's no sort of strategy to it. It's just where you feel that wood needs to be removed. Great, so after five minutes, I'm really far into the end of the cut now. And I've been carving up, I've been carving down. Uh, but now I want to carve sort of deeper at the same time. And my position changes slightly where the tool now wants to be engaging almost here to get really back into that corner. And so I'm going to change my body position slightly as I'm carving to get ahead of the cut. And I'm going to be looking over the top. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to jump straight onto the block itself. Have a little sit down, it's quite nice. And then that's where I can really begin to get over the top of what I'm doing. Nice and comfy, adding a lot of gravity onto the block itself. Pushing with my elbow forward and carving back into the cup itself. And I'm really focusing on that end grain with the left. With the right, it's quite hard to get the position of your body. Um, I want to focus on the left. And I'm going to come back in from this side and do the same. Now comes the tidy up. Um, so we've hollowed it quite nicely, and I'm just going to begin to tidy up the bottom. And to get there, I use another technique where I have my hand, my left hand, almost underneath the tool, and I'm using my thumb just to guide the tang of the knife in. And I can really get to that bottom section of the hollow. Great, so that's kind of all there is to it. Um, it's the relationship between left and right and body positioning. I guess my top tips are use the pivoting of your whole body rather than just your shoulder. Um, also, just give yourself a lot of patience to understand how this really works. It does take a long time to get right. I've been doing it for maybe four or five years now. and I think after year two, it started to make sense. Um, stick to it. Um, I think just have fun with it. There's so many, so many forms you can make just from hollowing. Um, and it's quite nice to just sort of use that energy and body to, to make these shapes. So I hope you find it inspiring. Let me know how you get on and have fun.